Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the growing row over Rishi Sunak's conflict of interest when it comes to the post-Brexit Indian trade deal as it appears the government are actively trying to stop Parliament from scrutinising the details. Now why would that be? But first if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics please subscribe to the channel. So I talked last week about the potential of the Indian trade deal, how it's hard to envisage that it's really going to be anything to crow about, with even the government saying it could be worth like 0.1% to our GDP if we get what we're asking for, which we won't, we never do. But I also mentioned my concern about Sunak acting less in the interests of the UK and more in the financial interests of his household. We've already seen how his actions as Chancellor and more recently as Prime Minister have tended to result in the business interests of his wife in particular being favoured. But when it comes to an Indian trade deal, well, Rishi Sunak's father-in-law is one of the richest billionaires, billionaires in India. He founded a company which his wife has a half billion pound stake in, a company that will absolutely benefit from a deal if Sonak agrees to certain things. And Sonak absolutely has the authority to block or approve anything, even if our negotiators think it's a bad idea to do so because they're acting under his directions. Essentially, if we offer up a hypothesis that a potential motivation for Rishi Sonak becoming prime minister was in order to arrange trade agreements to enrich his family, then he absolutely has the power to do that. You know, with Boris Johnson, we ended up with bad trade deals because he wanted his plaudits. He wanted the headline saying he'd negotiated this trade deal quickly when experts said, oh, it takes years. It's like, yeah, there's a reason it takes years. It takes a long time for both sides to inch very slowly towards a compromise because neither side wants to give too much away. But of course, if one side is happy to sell out their own country, then of course you can arrange these agreements very quickly indeed, which is what happened under Boris Johnson. Now, it is possible that Sunak wants the quick headlines as well to present a win to the public and, more importantly, the hard Brexit elements within his own party. But that he is also, or even mainly, potentially motivated by personal riches is worrying. The fact that this is even a possibility is of deep concern. It's the reason why Labour are calling for much more transparency over these trade negotiations. There was, a, there was a suggestion that Sunak should actually just recuse himself from the process altogether, given the staggering levels of wealth that this deal could potentially throw his way. But I'll tell you what particularly caught my eye. This morning, I was scanning through the, the newspaper front pages on the BBC News site as I do each morning. Uh, it's a sort of routine of mine now. I noticed the absence of The Observer, which is the Sunday edition of The Guardian. I thought, what's going on there? Because it actually struck me that there didn't seem to be that many there, but usually The Observer's there. And I thought, hmm, I wonder, I wonder what's on their front page today. So I checked it out. Main headline, Sunak faces fresh conflict of interest row on India trade talks. Now, the BBC have a habit of missing out front pages that carry stories which would be deeply embarrassing to the Tories. And, you know, if that is the headlines are carried by just one or two papers, if it's all of them, then there's no real choice. They have to just put some of them on there. And the pattern is utterly unmistakable. I, every time I notice that there's a, a notable absence, shall we say, from this BBC page, and it's usually The Observer or The Guardian, Whenever you check it out, it's almost always a story that would upset the government. So I immediately thought, hang on, this is maybe a more damaging story than I first thought. So I checked the article out. I wondered if it was just expressing the same concerns I had last week, that Sunak is too close personally to the deal and the potential for corruption is immense. But no, it was actually worse than that. The Observer reported that the Business and Trade Select Committee have been told by the Foreign Office in the strongest terms, it said, not to visit India this autumn as planned as part of their efforts to scrutinise the negotiations from the Indian side. Now, why are the government telling the relevant parliamentary select committee of MPs to keep their nose out? It is the purpose of select committees to keep their nose in. In addition, the Foreign Office said it would not assist in setting up meetings between the committee members and Indian officials and business leaders. This is extraordinary. 
the government are doing everything they can to block parliamentary scrutiny of the deal. Doesn't take a top political mind to know that the only plausible explanation is that the UK government are seeking to act against the interests of the UK in these talks. Cannot think of a single innocent explanation for actively blocking parliamentary scrutiny. In telling the Business and Trade Select Committee not to visit India this year while these trade negotiations are taking place, but to do so next year, the government are saying two things. First, that Parliament should not be examining the trade negotiations too carefully. Now, for what possible reason would the government have for telling Parliament the sovereign authority in this country to butt out? And secondly, that they intend to secure the deal this year or very quickly next year. After all, if they're fine with the committee visiting next year, it would suggest that they intend to close the deal quickly. Given that there are still a lot of things to sort out, that suggests that Sunak intends to completely abandon UK interests, just as Truss and Johnson did before him, in order to get a quick deal. Easy if your priority is not British interests, but the interests of Indian companies with whom your wife has a half a billion pound stake. Every trade expert I've seen commenting on the negotiations has suggested that there's a long way to go in these talks. They will, of course, be assuming that our team is working for the best possible deal from the UK perspective. But as with every other Brexit trade deal, if it turns out that the government are not interested in getting the best deal for the UK just themselves, then the deal could be closed incredibly quickly. It was pointed out that given Sunak's recent warning about not properly disclosing financial interests, he should be more careful in future, starting with the Indian trade talks. In reality, because Sunak completely got away with it, he will proceed with zero caution. See, let us hypothesise again. Let us just imagine Rishi Sunak has no interest in politics other than the money he can make for himself or his wife through it. Bear in mind, he said so himself recently. This summer, he was talking to a group of people and he actually said he'd only been in politics for a few years. You know, the, he's basically saying that he had no interest in politics until he became an MP. So let us just imagine that his, you know, when he, oh, I should become an MP, it was only to make his wife or himself, his household basically, richer. Now, we don't know this, but it is a credible possibility. Now, let us further say that Sunak has the chance to arrange a trade deal with India, which will make his wife a fortune, albeit at our expense. He's heading for electoral defeat next year. Let us imagine he recognises this despite what he says. If he's only in interested in enriching his household, he needn't care. The Indian trade deal, it's like the famous one last big job and we can retire from gangster films, isn't it? If he can close the deal, nothing which happens afterwards need concern him. It won't be illegal because he has the authority to agree whatever his MPs will let him agree. There'll be no criminal charges. He's not breaking the law. After the election, he will stand down, might even leave the country, go to California, as people are suggesting. As a result, no possible standards committee action could possibly concern him even if evidence turns up next year which suggests that he has behaved improperly. You know, this should be incredibly serious. The government are giving the strongest possible impression that they're selling us out, quite deliberately. But of course, most of the media will maintain a studious silence, except to laud the brilliance of the trade deal when it is announced. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join buttons for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.